I was in Australia for six months. And basically, uh, as what they call the Adelaide Thinker in Residence, I'm not responsible for the title. Of it. What they basically gave me was this very easy job. OK, Steve, help make the state sustainable climate-wise. That's not exactly a trivial thing. Even in a small state, well-governed, that's like California, where our governor announced an 80% target for cutting greenhouse emissions to 2050. And I'm on the committee that has to help tell them how to do that. And this is not going to be trivial. Uh, so South Australia set a 60% cut. And that's still not going to be trivial, given that the dominance of mining and coal and that kind of thing in, in that state. So how do you go about doing it? Well, my first advocacy is start smart. Look around at houses, at appliances like uh, air conditioners and refrigerators, and say, what's the state of the art for efficiency? How do you get the same service, cooling, for the lowest amount of energy input, well, you require that the manufacturers meet certain standards. If they don't, it's illegal. You can't just leave it to choice. You can't say, oh, my home is my castle. I want to have an inefficient refrigerator. That's my business. Yeah, but your castle is causing there to be more energy generated, putting pollution up there that's raising the sea level and threatening biodiversity and sending kids into the hospital with asthma from the air pollution. You've lost your right to claim you have the private right to put crap in your house when the state of the art in engineering allows much, much better service uh, without having as much effluent. Well, in California, there is a culture of protecting the commons if the costs are below say, the market interest rate. So if you can get what I call the 7-Eleven solution, if you can get better than a 7% return on your investment, that is the extra cost it is for the slightly more expensive refrigerator or air conditioner or a two-pane window, then that's better than the mortgage interest rate. That means your monthly payment is lowered. Even though you have a higher upfront cost over the, over the next seven years or 10 years, you've made money. And therefore, that's a cost-effective criteria, and it improves the health of the state and the environment. Well, California has long led the country with those kinds of rules. And in fact, they're, they have strong bipartisan support, except for deep ideologues, because they're cost-effective. So California has the lowest energy per person in the United States, comparable to Europe, where there's very strong rules. What's the worst state in the United States for energy per person and for carbon dioxide emissions per person? California is the best. Texas is the worst. wonder where the president vice president like to hang out. Why? Because the culture in Texas is no mandatory controls on private rights. The culture in California is protecting the commons and social attributes is just as important as private rights. So you're looking at an ideological cultural difference, and that is what determines the degree of our sustainability. So the public education in which these people who dissemble, take out of context, take little picky points, and then claim that they're the whole show, by confusing average people who already come in a culture where they distrust governance, you end up getting no action, whereas in a place like California or New York or Massachusetts or most of Europe and some states in Australia, but not all, those places have already crossed over the line politically where they think that sustainability, stewardship, and protecting the commons is an important social value. So we're really at, at the bottom arguing about social values. And the degree of uh, patchiness in the political landscape has to do with politicians who are reflecting what they think are the social values of the constituents or the campaign contributors who matter. And as long as the public lets them get away with it, that's what they're going to do. And there's been a big change on that as the moderate Republicans have joined a lot of the Democrats now in thinking that it's time to protect the commons at the United States level, even if it's not convenient for the fossil fuel producers and the big car manufacturers.